Hello students, welcome to Pi Academy, the place for mathematics and science. Dear students, in mathematics, we were discussing the chapter real numbers. Now, let us go for continuing this. You all know that in this chapter, mainly we are focusing on two important properties of positive integers. That is, one is Euclid's division algorithm and second one is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Till yesterday, we solved the problems on E D A. One more problem is left out. Now I am going to solve it. After that, we will focus on F D A. See that this is the problem. Please don't copy. Observe and listen my explanation. The question is check whether eight forty seven and two thousand one sixty are coprimes. If you want to check that, you must be aware of coprimes. This information has already been given in the very beginning of the chapter. Recall the definition of coprimes. A pair of numbers having the common factor one only. Or another definition is that a pair of numbers whose HCF is one only are called coprimes. Got it? Then how do you check? Yes, you are right. By finding the HCF of 847 and 2160, you can check whether these are coprimes or not. Okay, let us go for finding the HCF of these two numbers. Here are right. Not solution. As you are going to check in, therefore we can write verification. In verification, I'll go for taking these two numbers. That is 2160, which is greater than 847. A is greater than B. So according to Euclid's division algorithm, you have to express these two numbers in the form of A equal to B Q plus R. So let us go for dividing 2160 by 847. Observe it. Here 847 almost equal to 900. Think so. And this is 2160 approximately equal to 2000. If you think so, whether you go for taking it as twice, twos are, threes are, fours are, twos are is more suitable. Got it? So, 847 twos are, two sevens are, 14, carry one. Two fours are, eight plus one, nine. Two eights are, 60. Now, 10 minus four, it is six. Then five will remain, one or one, it will be 15, 15 minus nine, it is six. Then 0 will remain. Again, 1 over 1, it will be 10. 10 minus 6, 4. Here 1 will remain. 1 minus 1 means 0. 466. Now we can write 2160 as 847 into 2 plus the remainder 466. Observe, the remainder is not equal to 0. Hence, this process can be continued. Here 847 is greater than 466. Let us go for dividing 847 by 466. Whether you go for taking 1s or 2s are. Observe it. When you go for taking 2s are, it will be more than 900. But the number is less than 900. Hence, you can go for taking 1s are. 466, 1s are 466. Now subtract 7 minus 6, 1. 4 is there. So borrow 1, 14. 14 minus 6. It is 8. Here 7 will remain. 7 minus 4, 3. 381. Here I write 847 is equal to 466 into 1 plus the remainder 381. Observe the remainder. Again it is not equal to 0. Hence let us go for continuing this. Divide 466 by which number? 3. 81. Whether you go for taking 1s or 2s are, if you take 2s are, it will be more than 600. Hence, you can go for taking 1s are. 381 1s are, 381. Now, 6 minus 1, 5. Now, 16 minus 8, 8. 3 minus 3, 0. So, 85 will remain. We can write 466 as 381 1s are, plus the remainder is 85. Got it? 
Again, the remainder is not equal to 0. Hence, you can go for continuing this process. Divide 381 by 85. 381 by 85. Now, how much are? See that here, 85 is there. 381 is there. Approximately equal to 90. See, it is approximately equal to 400. Then, 9 fours are 36. So, you can go for fours are. Now, 4 fives are 22. 4 eights are 8 fours are 32. 32 plus 2, it is 34. 340. Now, 1, it is 4, 0. 41 will remain. We can write 381 as 85 into 4 plus the remainder 41. Again, the remainder is not equal to 0. You can continue this. We can write 85 as 31 hours are. I'm not going for work. Using working column, you can because it is a smaller number, you can write it directly. 41 hours are 2 za. How much? 41 2 za 82. Here 85 is there. Difference is 3. Clear? Next. Again, remainder is not equal to 0. Continue this. 41 is equal to 3. How much za? We know that 33 za 39. I'll write 3 13 za 39. How much will remain? 2 will remain. Again, this divisor is greater than 2. So, 3 is equal to 2. 1 is 2 plus 1. Now, 1 is greater than this remainder. Sorry, 2 is greater than this remainder. 2 is equal to 1 into 1. Sorry, 1 into 2 plus remainder is 0. What is the HCF? HCF is 1. Now, we all know that a pair of numbers having the HC of 1, that pair is called co-primes. Hence, these two are prime numbers. Co sorry, co-primes. We can write, we know that, we know that a pair of numbers, pair of numbers whose HCF is 1 are called co-primes. Therefore, the given numbers, given numbers, what are the given numbers? They are 847 and 2160 are co-primes. I hope that you all have understood this. It is one of the important question and also it is bit applied what you have learned so far regarding EDA. So now you are pausing the video, you have to copy from here to there. Got it? Yes, copy. Observe it. Here, next one is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. It has been already stated in the beginning class only. Once I repeat, according to this statement, every composite number can be expressed as the product of its prime factors and this prime factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. This is the statement. Now, in today's class, we are focusing on some of the applications of fundamental theorem of arithmetic. So now let us go through one by one. Here I have taken an example. Just one number, it is 140. Now we have to express this number as a product of its prime factors. How? Look, here 140 is there. I'll go for finding it out. We have to use the scale to draw the line. As it is even number, it is divisible by 2. Or as it ends with 0, you can divide it by either 2 or 5. I go for 2. 2, 7s are 14, 0 as it is. Again it is even number. 2, 3s are 6, 1 will remain 10, 2, 5s are. 35 is there. It is 7, 5s are. Got it? Even it can be continued. 5, 1s are. Now 140 is equal to, it can be written as, 2 square how many times? 2. 
then 7 into 5 into 1. If you write like this, it is just factorization. What is factorization? The method of expressing the given number as the product of its factors. But here, you are going to express the given number as a product of its prime factors. That is what, you, what we call prime factorization. That means the factor should be only primes. Hence, I won't consider 1. So, this is the prime factorization of 1 fourth. Clear up? The method of expressing the given number as the product of the prime factors is called prime factorization. So, this is one such example. Here, it is not necessary to write 1 at last. Here, we have one more example. 156. Again, it is even number 2. 7s are 15, sorry, 2 7s are 14, 1 will remain 16, 2 8s are. Then again it is even number, start dividing it by 2, 2 3s are 6, how much will remain? 1, 18, 2 how much are 18? 9s are, 39 is the multiple of 13 or 3, alright, 30, 3s are. Again you can, you may write either 3 1s are or not as it is. Because last number is prime only. Now the prime factorization of 156 can be written as 2 into 2 into 13 into 3. 2 is repeated by 2 times hence 2 square into 13 into 3. This is the prime factorization of 156. So this is example number 2. Now example number 3. Here is the number 32760. Let us start dividing it by either 2 or by 5 because it ends with 0. If you go for taking 2, 2 1s are 2, 1 will remain 12, it becomes 12, 2 6 are 12. Next, 2 3s are 6, 1 will remain, it is 16, 8s are then 0. Again, it is even number, start dividing it by 2, 2, uh, 2 8s are 16, now 2 1s are 2. 1 will remain 18, 9 za, then 0. Again, start dividing it by 2. 2, 4 za, 8. 1 is not divisible, hence 0. So, 2 40 za, 18. 1 will remain, it is 19. 2 9 za, 18. 1 will remain 10, 2 5 za, 4095. As this number ends with 5, start dividing it by 5. 5, how much of 14? 8 za, 40. 5, 1 za, 5, 4 will remain. 45, 5, 9 is a 45, 8, 19, from which number it can be divided, see that 8 plus 1 plus 9, 8 plus 1 is 9, 9 plus 9 is 18, 18 is the multiple of 3, hence it can be divided by 3, 3, 2 is a 6, 2 will remain 21, 3, 7 is a, then 3, 3 is a, again by which number, see that 2 plus 7, 9, 9 plus 3, it is 12, 12 is the multiple of 3, start dividing it by 3, 3, 9s are 27, 1s are, now it is from which number, 91 is the multiple of 13, 13 how much are, yes, 13, 7s are, 13, 7s are, 91, got it, now the prime factorization of 32,760 can be written as see that 2 how many times 3 times next 5 how many times 1 time into 3 2 time then 13 1 time and 7 1 time so it may be in any order either increasing order or decreasing order or even you can go for shuffling the prime numbers or prime factors. So this is the prime factorization of 32,716. I hope that you all have understood. Okay. Now, it was given in the examination also. The question was like this. I think it, before last year, in 2018 paper, you can see that express the given number like 140 as the product of its prime factors just for one mark 
So now you have to copy this here. I'll write worked example. Please go on writing with me worked examples. Then the first one is it is express express each of the following each of the following as the product of product of prime factors or they may ask you the question that find the prime factorization of the following numbers that that way also so this is the first example 140 and this is the second example 156 and this is the third example 32760 and don't go for working out in the working column let it be just below that only because they have asked you to find out so you are finding got it then this is and here now so please pause the video and copy it from here to there yes copy that yes i hope that you all have copied these three examples now we are moving to another application of fta that is uniqueness of fta fundamental theorem of arithmetic what is that uniqueness you just observe again these three examples the first in first example the number ends with zero third example number ends with zero observe their prime factorization both this and this and the number which does not end with zero observe its prime factorization see that this is if a number ends with zero could you tell what are the common prime factors present in their prime factorization yes you are right see that 2 is there 5 is there and here 2 is there 5 is there irrespective of their powers got it so if a number ends with 0 then can we say that it contains both 2 and 5 or it contains 2 into 5 understood Whereas, if a number does not end with 0, then it will not be in the form of 2 raised to the power m, so 2, 2 into 5. There may be only 2 or there may be only 5, but both will not be there. If both are there, both 2 and 5 are there, it ends with 0. Clear? Huh? So, that is the uniqueness of FTA. Alright, the case 1. Case 1 is... Let us assume that a is a positive integer. Then a raised to the power n. n is a natural number. a raised to the power n ends with 0. What is the condition for this? If and only if a is equal to 2 raised to the power m into 5 raised to the power n. That means in the prime factorization of A, both should be there. 2 and 5 should be there. Where M and N are. Again, the positive integers, nothing but natural numbers. M and N belong to. Alright, N. Clear up. Similar. Case 2. If A is a positive integer, Rise to the power n. n is a natural number. It does not end with 0. Does not end with 0. What is the condition? It is possible if and only if a is not equal to 2 raised to the power m into 5 raised to the power n, where m and n are positive integers nothing but natural numbers clear up so this is the uniqueness of fta if a number satisfies uniqueness of fta then we can say that it ends with zero if it does not satisfy uniqueness of fta then we cannot we can say that 
that number does not end with zero so this is also one of the important type of problems now let us go for solving just two to three problems on that please go for copy yes copy that observe the uniqueness of fta based on that just here i have taken two problems afterwards i'll go for taking one more problem a work example the very first one check whether the following numbers end with zero check whether the following numbers numbers end with zero here one first one in that it is 6 raised to the power n where n is a natural number we have already come to know that if the given number satisfies uniqueness of fta then it ends with zero right let us check it out 6 we have to find out the prime factorization of 6 it is 2 3 sum now we can write 6 as 2 into 3 6 raised to the power n is equal to 2 into 3 4 raised to the power n we know that the prime factorization of 6 is 2 into 3 does it contain both 2 and 5 no it contains only 2 there is no 5 we can write the prime factorization the prime the prime factorization factorization of 6 does not contain what 5 2 is there but there is no 5 therefore we can write therefore 6 raised to the power n does not satisfy satisfy the uniqueness of what f t a then hence we can say that 6 raised to the power n does not end with 0 end with 0 Clearer? hence it is very fine so now you just go for copying that and I'll give you two more problems you just try to solve yourself try to verify yourself the first one is it is 20 raised to the power n where again n is a natural number now please go for copying this I hope that I had you, have, you might have finished because I had given time for verifying this that is 20 raised to the power n where n is a natural number just what you have done verify that I will go for explaining verification first you have to find out the prime factorization of 20 here I have written 20 2 10 sub 20 2 5 sub 10 so 20 can be written as 2 raised to the power 2 into 5 then 20 raised to the power n it is 2 square into 5 4 raised to the power n see that the prime factorization of 20 does it contain both 2 and 5 yes it contains both 2 and 5 therefore you can say that 20 raised to the power n satisfies the uniqueness of fta hence 20 raised to the power n ends with 0 now another one just i have written after explaining you have to copy this one third one is 60 raised to the power n where n is a natural number we have to check that whether it ends with 0 or not verification 60 is prime factorization see that here i have found out 60 is there it is even start dividing it by 2 2 30 is a 60 2 15 is a then 3 5 is a 50. You can write 60 as 2 square 3 into 5. Clear up? Now 60 raised to the power n is equal to 2 square into 3 into 5 whole raised to the power n where n is a natural number. Observe it. The prime factorization of 60 what it is 2 square into 3 into 5 it contains both 2 and 
phi i will tell that hence therefore you can say that 10 to the 16 raised to the power n satisfies the uniqueness of fta hence 16 raised to the power n ends with zero clear up i hope that you have understood in the examination point of view point of view it is important can be given for two mark just you can put double star mark for this copy this okay dear students now we are moving to another important application of fta fundamental theorem of arithmetic it is finding hcf and lc here are right hcf and lcm can you tell me what it is what is hcf and what is lcm it doesn't mean that this highest common factor lowest common multiple they are the full form of hcf and lcm but what is hcf and what is lcm <coughs> to understand this now let us go for taking some one of the example here i'll take the numbers 20 and 30 you know that how to find out the prime factorization of these 20 can be written as it is 2 as it is even number divisible by 2 2 tens are then 2 fives are 30 can be written as 3 tens are then 2 fives are now look here here the prime factorization of 20 can be written as 2 raised to the power 2 into 5 30 Can be written as two into three into five. Now, here I go for taking the common factor. What is the common prime factor? It is in both two is there and five is also there. See the two five. Hence, I write two into five. I go for taking least power of these common. Prime factors. What is the least power of two in these two? It is here two is there, here one is there. Which is least? One is least. And here same. So you can just write one. Understood? Now two raised to the power one is two, and five raised to the power one is five. Two fives are ten. So this is highest common factor. The highest number which divides the given number, given numbers. Completely is called HCF. Understood? So it is the product of smallest power of each common prime factors involved in the number is called HCF. I hope that you all have understood. Now let us go for the LCM. LCM. In case of LCM, we go for writing all the factors involved in those numbers. What are the factors? Two is there, five is there. Here, two, three, five, five are there. Now I'll write. They are two into three into five. Now I'll go for taking the highest power of each prime factor. Here, two is there. What is the highest power of two? It is two only. Highest power of three? Just one. Highest power of five? It is one. What is two square? It is four. Three raised to the power one, three. Five raised to the power one, five. Then four threes are twelve. Twelve fives are. It is sixteen. Therefore, LCM is sixteen. Hence, you can define LCM as the product of greatest power of each prime factor, not common. Each prime factor involved in the number. Just you can. Recall this: finding the LCM in your previous class, particularly in sixth standard. Here, twenty is there. What are the multiples of twenty? Twenty, forty, sixty, eighty, hundred, one twenty, one forty, like that. You used to write. Similarly, thirty. What are the multiples of thirty? Thirty, sixty, thirty-four, zero, ninety, one twenty, right? Then one fifty. 180 and so on, and you used to you you used to encircle the common multiples. 
see that you are also 60 60 is the common multiple of 20 and 30 and also here 120 is there similarly it comes 180 will come and so on but among these which is the least one 60 120 180 least one is 60 so that is the lowest common multiple but according to the prime factorization we go for finding in this way clear on so now let me go for writing the definition of both hcf and lcm and you have to copy this one observe here first let us come to know what is hcf and what is lcm just i have explained how to find out hcf and lcm by fundamental theorem of arithmetic right now based on this you can go for writing the definition of both hcf and lcm see that here hcf first we took the common factor then we took the least power of each common factor then we found out the product the product is hcf here we have written the same definition highest common factor the product of smallest power of each common prime factor the product of smallest power of each common prime factor involved in the numbers is called hcm got it next one, lcm lcm is see that we took all the prime factors involved in the numbers and we also took that the greatest power of each factor see greatest power of 2 is 2 3 is 1 and 5 is 1 then we found out the product and that product is LCM so now the definition of LCM can be written like this the product of greatest power of each prime factor involved in the numbers the product of greatest power of each prime factor involved in the number is called LCM and this is one of the example for LCM that is find the HCF and HCF and LCM by FTA. I hope that you all have understood. Now just let us go for one more information. We found out both HCF and LCM of the given number. Just go for the numbers 20 and 30 and HCF and LCM. What is 20? 30 is a 600. 10, 60 is a 600, right? So there is a relationship among the numbers and their HCF and LCM. What is that? Let me go for telling you that with the, by taking the same examples. 20 and 30 are given two positive integers. I go for taking them as A and B. Let A equal to 20 and B equal to 30. Their HCF and LCM are found out. HCF is how much? It is 10. And the LCM is it is 60. Now observe it. I go for finding the product of HCF and LCM. HCF into LCM. It is equal to HCF is 10, LCM is 60, the product will be 6. Then the given numbers, the given numbers are A and B, their product 20 into 30 is equal to 600, they are up. So the product of HCF and LCM is equal to the product of the given numbers. Hence we can write HCF into LCM is equal to A into B. So this is the relationship among the given two positive integers a and b and they hcf and lcm clear up so now i'll write that one just keep observing don't copy afterwards i'll tell you so before that just here i'll write the conclusion therefore the hcf is 10 and lcm is 60. look here we are going to write the relationship among 
द गिवन टू पॉजिटिव इंटीजर्स गिवन टू पॉजिटिव इंटीजर्स वॉट आर दोस ये एंड बी एंड बी एंड दे एच सी एफ एंड एल सी एम दट इज कम जस्ट वी हैव ऑलरेडी कम टू नो वॉट इट इज सो वी कैन राइट इट हैज एच सी एफ इन टू एल सी एम इज इक्वल टू ए इन टू बी दिस इज द रिलेशनशिप वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वन मस्ट बी रिमेंबर देन हियर यू कैन नोटिस दैट देर आर फोर टर्म्स एच सी एफ इज वन टर्म एल सी एम इज वन टर्म ए इज वन टर्म एंड बी इज वन टर्म टोटल फोर टर्म्स आर देर वेन यू नो एनी थ्री टर्म्स यू कैन फाइंड आउट फोर्थ टर्म हाउ हियर आर दैट सपोज यू नो ए एंड बी एंड एल सी एम यू हैव टू फाइंड आउट एच सी एम सो एच सी एम कैन बी रिटर्न एज ए इन टू बी बाय एल सी एम ऑफ दो गिवन नंबर्स second one you want lcm so solve lcm it is equal to a into b by hcm clear up hcf and lcm both are given including one number b we want a then you have to solve a a is equal to hcm into lcm divided by b one more we want b then write lcm into lcm divided by a and another interesting thing you can come to know that observe the given numbers here on 20 and 30 their lcm is 10 lcm is 60 observe these two hcf and lcm of the given numbers is there any relationship between these two then can we say that 60 is completely divisible by 10 yes see that 10 6 are 60 then what do you call 10 10 is a factor of 60 so in hcf and lcm of two given numbers then can we say that hcf is always a factor of lcm right next again see that you 10 and 60 are there you just go for taking the multiples of 10 10 10 2 is a 20 3 is a 30 4 is a 40 5 is a 50 6 is a 60 so 60 is the multiple of 10 then uh, can we say that 60 is the multiple of 10 yes if it is so we can say that lcm is the multiple of hcf understood okay now let me go for writing these two important points one is hcf of two given numbers hcf is always a factor of lcm you cannot take hcf of two numbers and lcm of other two numbers hcf and lcm both should be from the same number from same two given number hcf is always a factor of lcm and another point is lcm is what is a multiple of or is always a multiple of hcf so these are the four important four important points then plus two more important points Okay, now, pausing the video, you have to copy from here. See that HCF and LCM from there. Copy up to your definition. Then, one just one example. Next, after that, this relationship is very important in the examination point of view. So you have to copy up to you. Yes, copy. Now, let us go for solving some more problems. That is to find out HCF and LCM of the Given numbers. Here I have taken three three positive integers. So one problem has been taken from NCERT and one has been taken from the reference. Look here. How to find out? Please don't go for copying. Afterwards I'll give you time for copying this. 
you have to listen my explanation here hcf and lcm of these numbers 6 72 and 120 by prime factorization that is very important prime according to prime factorization first you have to find out the prime factorization of each number so now 6 you can find out like this 2 3 are repeatedly i have been telling please go for using the scale and pencil to draw these lines then even it can be continued 3 1s up but we have to take prime factors next 72 here it is even divisible by 2 2 1s up 3 is up 1 will remain 12 6 up 3 1s up 3 2s up now 2 6 up 2 3 is up clear up next 120 Please don't go for finding this factorization in the working column. It should be in the uh, middle part only. Here, it is even. Start dividing it by 2. 2, 6 are 12, then 0 as it is. That is 2, 60 is 120. 60 is even. Start dividing it by 2. 2, 3 is a 6, 0 as it is. That is 2, 30 is a 60. Again, 30 is even. 2, 1 is a 5 is a 2, 15 is a 30. Next, 3, 5 is a clear up. Now, let us go for listing the prime factorization of each number. 6, what is that? It is 2 into 3. 1 may be written or may not be written. Next, 72. Observe, 2 is repeated by 3 times. 2 raised to the power 3. And 3 is repeated by 2 times. So, 3 raised to the power 3. 2. Next, 120. 120 can be written as, see that, 2 is repeated by 3 times, 2 raised to the power 3 and into 3 into 5. Next, you are going to find out both HCF and LCF. Here on the right, HCF. HCF, first you have to take only the common factors. What are the common factors? See that here is 2, here is 2, here it is 2. 2 is a factor of all these. Alright, 2. Is there any other number? Here is 3, 3 and 3 into 3. Understood? Next. What is the least power of 2? Here is 1, here is 3, here is 3. Least power is 1. And least power of 3? Here is 1, here is 2 and here is 1. Hence we can write 1. What is 2 raised to the power 1? It is 2. 2 ra 3 raised to the power 1? 3. 2 3s are 6. So HCF is 6. Next, let us find out LCM. LCM, as, a, as we know that, first we will write all the factors involved in the numbers. What are the factors involved? 2 is there, 3 is there and also 5. Alright, 2 into 3 into 5. But you should take the highest power of each prime factor. What is the highest power of 2? 1, 3, 3. 3 is the highest power. Then in 3, highest power is 1, 2, 1 is there. Highest power is 2. Then highest power of 5 is 1. It is equal to. What is 2 raised to the power 3? 2, 2 is a 4. 4, 2 is a 8. 3 square, it is 9. Then 5 raised to the power 1 is 5. Next, it should be multiplied. Better to go for the, these two. 8 5s are 40. 40 into 9. 4 9s are 36. So it is 360. It will be easier. Therefore, we can write HCF is how much? 6. And LCM is 360. This is the method of finding HCF and LCM of given three numbers by prime factorization. Prime factorization, it is nothing but fundamental theorem of arithmetic. The question can be asked in this way also. Find the HCF of these numbers by FTA. In the same method, let us go for finding them. Here on right. Solution. As I said, first what you should know, you have to find out the prime factorization of each number. First, 
275. I go for using the scale. You should also follow the same like this. It looks neat. Now, as the number ends with 5, you can start with start dividing it by 5. 5 omas are 5 5s are 25. 2 will remain 25. Again, 5 5s are 25. Clear up. Next, here. As it ends with 5, again divide it by 5. 5 1s are 1s. Next, let me take the second number. It is 225. Here, start dividing it by which number? As it ends with 5, you can divide it by 5. 5 how much are? 4s are 20. 2 will remain 25. 5 5s are 45 years there. So again, it is divisible by 5 as it ends with 5. 5 how much are? 5 9s are 45. Next, 3 3s are clear up. Let us go for one more number. It is 175. Now, it is as it ends with 5. Again, divide it by 5. 5, 3 is a 15. 2 will remain 25. 5, 5 is a 25. Next, again start dividing it by 5. 7 is a 35. That's all. See, these are prime numbers so that you can end up to them. Now, let us go for writing the prime factorization of each number. What is the first number? It is 275. What is this prime factorization? 5 is repeated by 2 times into then 11. Second number is 225. So, here 3 is repeated by 2 times 3 square. 5 is repeated by 2 times 5 square. Next, third number is 175. 5 is repeated by 2 times into then 7 once only. Now, let us go for finding HCF and LCF. In HCF, first, what is the very first step to be done? It is, we have to, we have to take the common factors. What are the common factors? Here is 5, here is 5, here is 5. 5 is there. Then least power. Least power. Here 2, 2, 2 and 2 is there. Least power is that only. 5 square is there. What is 5 square? It is 25. Therefore, we can write HCF is 25. Now, let us go for finding LCF. Yes. In, to find out LCF, you have to write all the factors involved. What are the factors involved? There is 5, there is 11, 3, 7. Let me go for writing all of these. Here 3 is there, 5 is there, 7 as well as 11. Correct? 5, 11, 3, 5, 5 and 7. Yes. Now, each prime factor is taken. Now, what should be done in the next step? We have to take highest power of each factor. What is the highest factor, highest power of 3? Three? 3 only 1 and its power is 2. Let me write 3 square. Highest power of 5? It is 2. Highest power of 7? It is 1. Highest power of 11? It is 1. What is 3 square? Yes, you are right. 9. 5 square? 25. Then 7 raised to the power 1 is 7. 11 raised to the power 1 is 11. 11 7s are 77. I hope that you have understood. It is equal to. Now, to make the calculation simple, you can go for this method. 9 keep that as it is. Go for multiplying this. Because we are very familiar with the table. 9 as well as 25. 25 7s are. 25 7s are. 175. 17 will remain. 25 7s are. Again, 175. 12 carry 1, 9, 1. So it is 192. So 1925. I hope that you have understood. <coughs> then go for multiplying this by 9. 9 
फाइव जा फोर्टी फाइव फोर इज क्या है नाइन टू सॉ एटीन एटीन प्लस टू ट्वेंटी टू टू इज क्या है नाइन नाइन सॉ एटी वन एटी वन प्लस टू एटी थ्री एटी इज क्या है नाइन वन सॉ नाइन नाइन प्लस एट इट इज सेवेंटी सो सेवेंटी थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव सो कंक्लूजन देर फोर एच सी एफ इज हाउ मच ट्वेंटी फाइव एंड एल सी एम इज इट इज सेवेंटी थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फाइव सी यूजली वे पुट टू लाइन्स लाइक दिस द प्रॉब्लम इज ओवर यूजली इन इन लैंग्वेज इफ अ सेंटेंस इज ओवर वी go for using the dot that indicates the sentence is completed full stop if it is in case of hindi we go for using the line the vertical line in case of mathematics just we go for putting two lines like this now this is the method of finding hcf and mcm now you have to pause the video and should copy it from there to here You have to copy both the examples. Copy this. Now, the third example. Let's go through this. Find the HCF of ninety six and one hundred four by a prime factorization. Hence, find the LCM. Got it? Now, let us go for finding. Just we have learnt how to find it out. First, I'll go for. Finding the prime factorization of each number, ninety six is there. Then, as it is e one, start dividing it by two. Two how much are? Four is a eight. One will remain sixty. Two eight is a sixty. Forty eight. Again it is e one number. Two two is a four. Then two four is a. Again it is e one number. Two one is a two two is a. E one it is two six is a. Then two three is a. Next, second number is it is one out four. Next, as it is even number, you can start dividing it by two. Two fives are then two twos are then two twos are four one will remain. It becomes twelve. Two six are twelve then two ones are threes are. It is thirty. That's a prime number. You can end up to there. Let us go for writing the prime factorization of both. First one is ninety six. It is Two is repeated how many times? One, two, three, four, five times. Two raised to the power five into three. One out four. One out four is two is repeated by three times into thirteen. Now first let us find out HCF. Find the HCF by prime factorization. HCF is equal to as we know that first we have to take the common factor. What is that? Here two, here two. I'll write two. Then should we take least power or highest power? Yes, it is least power. What is the least power? Three. What is two cube? Two into two into two. It is eight. Got it? Eight is the LCM. Now let us go for finding LCM. See here we have got. LCM. Now we have to find out LCM. Find the LCM. You may go for finding the LCM again by prime factorization method or another method. As I said, the relationship between two given positive integers a and b and their HCM and LCM is HCM into LCM is equal to a into b. You can when three terms are known, you can find out the fourth term that can also be used for the sake of introducing this relationship. I am going to find out the LCM by this method. So we all know that LCM is equal to the product of two numbers divided by HCM. What is the product of two numbers? That is ninety six into one hundred four. And HCF is it is eight. I hope that you have understood. Now this is equal to you can cancel it. Eight one zero. Eight, one will remain sixteen. Eight two zero. Next it is one not four. Now twelve four zero. Twelve four zero forty eight. Four is the carry. 
12 zeros are 0. 0 plus 4, 4. 12 ones are 12. 1240. You can also find out like this. Usually, this method will be asked for 1 marks in the examination. Okay. Now, we can write the conclusion as, therefore, HCF, HCF is 8 and LCM is 1248. Got it? Okay. Now, you just I'll give you one more, one more example. You should try to do this one. Just you have to take the numbers 96 and 404. See, these two are the numbers given in NCRT textbook. You have to find out their HCF and hence find their LCM by this method. Okay, I hope that you can do that. In tomorrow's class, I in tomorrow's class I'll ask the answer for this question. Hmm? So <clears throat> now before concluding, so first you will go for pausing the video and you will start writing from there to here. After copying this, don't forget to recall whatever we have covered today. Please work out the day syllabus on the same day itself. Don't keep anything pending. And today what the problems we have solved all are very important in the examination. So next we have the exercise. It is exercise number 1.2. Let us go for uh, continuing that in tomorrow's class. Thank you.